Hi, welcome to Chem with Chem. In this session, we're working question five of the May June 2015 edition of the CXC CSEC Chemistry Paper 2. Please check out all the other materials that are on the channel just for you. Also, like, share, and subscribe. Let's dive in. Now, the Caribbean is known for its sugar cane, Jamaica especially. Barbados for its rum, Jamaica for its rum. Now, this question is about the extraction of sugarcane and some of the applications of the, the, the processes. Now, this is a flow chart. Figure three is a flow diagram of the industrial processing of sugarcane to produce crystalline sucrose. Study the figure carefully and answer the questions which follow. Now, um, I'm going to preempt a few of the questions so we don't have to be moving about but of course you can always rewind just so you can see the flow diagram so p is left blank q is left blank product x is product x and there's a blank space after bagas so of course after the sugar cane is brought to the train mill um we know that they pass through rot rotating knives and extractor and we get the juice. After we get the juice, we have to go to process P. Now the juice is mixed with, you know, some dirt from the, the field and some ashes and a lot of things. So we'd have to undergo a process known as clarification at process P. Then the juice is filtered. After we filter, we're going to have the residues, all the trash and sediments that could not pass through the, the filtration system. The juice that passes through now will then have to be evaporated. Right? And that evaporation is done at low pressure so we don't end up with burnt sugar. Or, you know, we're not trying to get brownie, we're trying to get crystals. Then we would have to now have centrifugation. This is where the mixture, after it's been evaporated, is spun at high speed, several times gravity, to separate the sugar crystals from the liquid. All right? So product X would be molasses. Molasses is further fermented to give rum, but we're not looking at um, that part as yet. And then over the other side, after the, at the top, we had mentioned the train, the mill train. We get juice from the mill train and we get bagas, or what we call the trash, cane trash. You now the, the bagas has um, several uses. The bagas can be used to make bagas board, and it can also be sent to the boiler room where it is used to heat large vats of water from which um, hydroelectricity is generated. So we'll bear that in mind for that big gap right there. So we're just going to go ahead and just fill in this process because that's what they're asking us about on the next page. So it's not on the next page, same, same page. So process P is clarification clarification, process Q is evaporation. Part two, state the importance of the centrifugation process. And so it separates the sugar crystals from the liquid molasses and separate as a rat in it. Please note the spelling. Product X is molasses. Part four, the bagasse produced is used in the factory during the process of sugar cane. In which part of the factory is this bagasse used and what is it for? So it's used in the, in the boiler room
So it's using the boiler room to heat water from which electricity is generated. So it's a vertical process. Nothing is wasted, everything is used. Many Caribbean islands are renowned for the quality of rum they produce. The alcohol content of a typical rum averages between 40% and 55%. Part one. During the fermentation process in the making of rum, yeast feeds on the sucrose in molasses, converting it into simpler sugars, which are then converted to ethanol. Outline using balanced equations, the formation of ethanol from sucrose. Right, ethanol from sucrose. Well, um, at this level, we are not expected to to know the formula for, for sucrose. So we can just say sucrose is broken down to give simpler sugar, glucose and fructose. And then from there we can, we can write our equations or balanced equations for the conversion of the glucose to the ethanol. We can state that sucrose which is a complex sugar plus water in the presence of the right enzymes, maltase, amylase, gives us glucose, which is a simple sugar. Then now we're going to show how glucose is converted to ethanol. So we're going to use the formula of glucose that we're expected to know at this level, C6, H12, O6, which would be in solution in aqueous solution in the presence of zymase. That's the enzyme in yeast, optimum temperature, 37 degrees Celsius and at the correct pH. This will give us alcohol, ethanol, C2H5OH, which will be in aqueous medium. It's a liquid, but it would be in aqueous medium and would also get carbon dioxide, which is a gas. That's pretty much what happens during fermentation. And we're just checking to ensure that um, our equations, our equation is balanced. Let's see, two, two is four. So we need two carbon dioxide. That should be it. Yep, That's, that is it. That will give us our marks. Part two, I wonder which school Jemina attends. Jemina was presented with a flask that contains a mixture of diluted rum. Draw a label diagram of the apparatus she should use in the laboratory to obtain a concentrated sample of ethanol. All right, so we're going to be using, we would use simple distillation. So we'll just set up our, this is what the setup of our apparatus would be. Simple line diagram, we need our reaction flask. I'll just put heat source, heat. So of course we have to apply heat. Um, the tube collecting the vapors, well, this would be our diluted rum. That's our collecting tube. And then of course what we would need our thermometer, and then this would have to be sealed naturally. So this is our thermometer, thermometer, thermometer. This is our reaction flask. Uh, 
And uh, well, I think I left off an adapter, right, but I guess we'll just put it in nicely here. So from here, we'll need some form of connector. Spend too, spend too much time on the connector. So here we are. So this is our condenser. So our tube goes through, or our tube is enveloped by the condenser, high big condenser. So it's like a tube within a tube. Here, water in here, water out. So as the vapor, as the mixture is heated and the vapor comes up through the tube, don't necessarily need to put that in showing the color, I'm just explaining. So as the vapor comes up and goes across, water is passing through the sheet or passing, passing through this condenser. That's what it's called. And because the water is cool, it's condensing as the name suggests, causing the, the vapor of the ethanol that is coming out first because it has a lower boiling point, 78 degrees Celsius. So it would leave the water behind. So as the, as the vapor of the ethanol passes through the area, where the condenser is, which is enveloping that tube. And of course, we will find that condensation occurs. And before you know it, you'll start having ethanol being collected as your fraction that comes off first. So the ethanol will drip, drip here. So this is your collecting flask. Collect the ethanol. This is your condenser. I will leave out anything thermometer, whatever delivery tube. Well, that's a given, and this should give us um, the three marks. Don't need to overdo it. That is that. Okay, and this is the last, last three for 50 marks. After after accidentally leaving a bottle of wine open for several days, Jemina, the school, the student, Jemina, found that the wine tasted slightly sour. She was given magnesium oxide to react with a sample of the sour wine. So just the type of reaction that takes place when the magnesium oxide is mixed with the sour wine. Write a balanced chemical equation for this reaction. No. Acids in general uh, have a sour taste. So when wine, well, the active ingredient in wine or what makes wine wine is alcohol, ethanol. So when, if, when wine is exposed to air, it undergoes oxidation and the wine spoils, the wine becomes sour. You don't want that to happen. That's like a disgrace. Well, at least in the Middle East, you know, we're not so big on wines in our region. But anyway, you don't want your, your wine to be sour. It looks bad. So when the ethanol is oxidized, it forms ethanoic acid, which now reacts with magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide is the oxide of a, of a metal, which is a base. And then the ethanoic acid from the wine, and that should sound familiar to you, ethanoic acid is what is in the vinegar. Can you imagine you're being poured a glass of what should be wine and it turns out to be vinegar, right? And if we remember correctly, um, when, when Jesus was on the cross and yeah, he said he was thirsty, they gave, him, they gave him vinegar. So same principle, they gave him spoiled um, wine. That was an insult, right? So back to the, 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 the script. <laughs> so, so just the type of reaction. So an acid and a base gives a neutralization reaction. Acid on a base gives a neutralization reaction. And the balance equation for that, um, let's switch over to black. So the 
the acid is CH3COOH, which is aqueous plus magnesium oxide, OMG, well, MgO, which is a solid. And let's identify the replaceable hydrogen so we kind of have an idea of where this is going. Magnesium is in group two. And well, so let's just get this complete. So we'd have CH3COO. The Mg would go at the end, but magnesium is in group two. And um, CH3COO, the ethanoate ion, um, it has a valency of one minus. So we would need two of that to go with the magnesium. The metal normally goes at the front, but in this case, this is the only case where you have the metal going at the end, right? Because the metal is replacing the replaceable hydrogen, which is actually at the end, which is highlighted here or underlined in red. So this would also give us, of course, acid and a base gives us salt and water only. So we'd need to write that. And to balance everything, we need to put a two right there in front of the ethanoic acid and everything else is, everything is now balanced. And just like that, we got 15 marks. I'm still concerned about why Jemina was given dilute rum and why Jemina was allowed to taste the wine. Um, if you found value in this video, just give it a like, share, and if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing. Thank you for joining Kim with Kim. See you in the next video.